first of all, I still do read. Um, I get it. But I want to put a voice on the other end of it, um, especially with these self-help books, because like we can put a lot of value on them and we can kind of get lost in the sauce with them. So the thought is, so I've read at least 25 to 30 of them since being out here. I've done the book clubs with them, you know, all the way. We got Eckhart Tolle, Stephen Covey. We've got the seat in the soul. We've got the how not to give a fuck, the dealing with anxiety, like artist way, like so many different ones. And I kind of came up with the hypothesis. It's like, what all has even stood out from any of those? Like specifically, is there anything that really differentiates them from each other? And I'm sure there are, but do I remember them? No. So the idea is perhaps the real value in those books is on the author for writing them. Like they, so basically the authors are getting way more out of those books than any of their readers. That's my hypothesis. So what I would say, or what my goal is, instead of to continue reading self-help books, it's like, let's write one for our own good. So I started writing one. I've got like rough outline. I'm going to try to keep it short and simple. I don't want, I don't want, that always pisses me off when like, there's a full chapter to something that could have been said in like a paragraph. Cause it, it's gotta be a book, you know, it's gotta right. be certain length. Otherwise it's not marketable. So yeah, man, like, um, so you're I'm, working on a book. Yeah, I am. I wow, am. I had no idea. Well, and it's really, it just came to me. I was like, man, let's look at any of these authors. Are any of their protégés or anyone that's read their books ever reached the same level of success as them? I would say no. The closest one would probably be like Carl Jung with Freud. But like, that was like, not just somebody that read his book. He was, I don't know. And he kind of, he kind of branched off, I, but he's the closest one. You got even like Eckhart Tolle, he's got a couple like protégés that will go to his conventions when he doesn't want to go. Tony Robbins, the same boat, but have any of them created somebody or shepherded someone to be as successful as them? And I don't think, I think the answer is no. Mm. So that makes me think that maybe they don't even know exactly what it is they discovered, but the one thing they all have in common is that they discovered it themselves. So, mm. and perhaps in writing the books that it even helps them get all their thoughts in a certain place. I don't know, mapped out and like expressed in a way that just keeps making a stronger and stronger like case for themselves to be, I don't know, free and enlightened and all the other buzzwords. Like, I think that's, I think the real value is in writing one. Man, you just blew me away. <laughs> I didn't expect that. And that's, I think that's brilliant. And I, I know what you mean. And I, I, so same realm of what you're talking about. I don't know if I told you this story. I was in a Barnes and Noble within the last few months or so, killing some time. I go in there and I was walking to one of the, it was, I walked into the self-help book section and I, I've read all that stuff too. Right. And I remember when you were doing the seven habits of highly effective people book club and all that. And I've done that three that, times. You've done it three, three times? Three times. Dude, and that's a serious book, man. Like I that's, love it. It's probably my favorite one. It is not an easy read. I don't care what it is. It's very like you have to really concentrate and pay attention <laughs> when you're doing that. But I walk into the book section. I'm like, oh, I wonder what, uh, maybe I can pick up a quick book of inspiration. I'm looking, and I'm looking at all the titles and the covers. And it's everyone just smiling with their arms crossed. Right. Like, and I'm not putting down any of these people or their books and I'm making up what I'm about to say, the books. Like, it's like, save yourself and be the best you. And it, I just, I go, this is all the same. Everyone's saying kind of the same thing. It's really not this novel idea that's being said, but you're right. People do marketing right. and they make it longer than probably what it has to be to hit certain criteria mm -hmm. for a publisher. And look, I'm not hating. Get do what you do, but like I kind of start to see it now, and I'm I'm more attracted now to older books because yes, people made money off books at that, but it's not like as flashy and as I don't know if that makes any sense. It does, it does, and it, yeah. and there's a couple of self help books that talk about that. I think oh, even okay. the, I think even the Seven Habits one does. It's like no, it was a different one. Um, I don't even think it was Seed of the Soul. It may have been, which is like- I haven't read that one, Seed of the Soul. That's Oprah Winfrey's number one book. It's like Gary Zukoff, I believe. Seed of the Soul? Yeah, it's very 
Buddhist. I've never read it. It's it's interesting. We did that in our book club. Like we've done a lot like the Atomic Habits. We've done them like so many of them. Then you got your Joe Dispenza. Um, Do you still have this book club? No, it, um, okay. we did it through COVID. Um, yeah, because was everyone had all the extra time. We're meeting on Zoom is great. But yeah, I'd say after the first like two years of COVID, when things started opening back up, we're all kind of like went our own ways. But we're still we're also encouraging and like friendly with each other. Like you, you really open up when you do those types of book clubs um, with each other. Um, I guess that kind of another notion on just to keep going with that or what you're just talking about the marketing thing with like the smiles and stuff like that. It's just, a, it's everything's repackaged. Like okay. no one, no one's saying anything so uh, one of a kind and brilliant that no one, someone else has already said. Right. Right. If that, yeah. Again, not hating, just, I just kind of see through like, why am I going to read something that I've already read recycled a thousand times, even though that person may put it in a way, maybe that someone understands. Of course, it. of course. But yeah. I'm, but like, this is kind of uh, to go off that even further is like, I think reading is a very passive thing. Mm. Like take any man or woman in the centuries of time and make a two minute highlight reel of their life. Is there going to be any wasted moments in that highlight reel of them in the room reading a fucking book? <laughs> no, no, but the authors, one, their highlight reel might be them writing it or the things that they write about in their book, the actual events happening, those will be in the highlight reel. The book is just kind of like this passive, like, hey, let me preserve this story, pass it along. Mm -hmm. But like words itself are just very um, approximated. They're very generalized. Like they can never really get across like those feelings that you really felt like whatever that guy's writing that novel about. It's like, man, like this moment meant so much to me. And like, they try to put in the best words they can, but it's never going to be completely, I don't know, felt or expressed in a way that some, like where anyone could pick it up and go, oh, I get it. It's kind of like, no, man, this is an approximation. You got to fill in all the blanks. Like reading is a passive thing. Mm. Have you read the book, How to Read a Book? I have. Okay. And that also uh, is interesting. I actually kind of... So let me... I am a walking contradiction. So I currently have an app called Headway which um, has all the self-help books on it, but it is, everything's condensed into like 15 minutes and they'll even read it to you. So it takes like all the highlights. So I would actually, even if there was a book I want to read, which there are plenty, like I'm reading the one you gave me by, mm -hmm. um, what's his name? Rick Rubin. Uh, uh, the Creative, Creative Act of Being. Yeah, I'm enjoying it. And so I know I'm talking shit on books, but I'm still <laughs> reading. But I do love the idea of just, okay, let me listen to a 15 minute audible version of this book. And if I do feel like there's something in there that then I'd go back and read it. And that kind of goes along with how to read a book where they have you read the title, read all the titles, yeah. to all the chapters, and then breeze through it and then read through it all again. It's like, if you feel like it's worthy of your time, because ultimately you can spend a lot of time reading these books. Yeah. And are how much are you getting out of it? You got to ask like effective, how effective are these books for us? And that's kind of why like, I just wanted to raise the voice. Obviously, I'm not shunning books or saying, burn those guys. But um, there's some bullshit going on, man. <laughs> Let's not get our... And, and there's also the notion of like, if you need self-help, you're kind of reaffirming that something's wrong with you, which I know we've you've talked about yeah. on the podcast before. Yeah, It's just like, you know, let's make sure, don't forget, reading is passive. Like you, anything truly beautiful, we're going to find on ourselves. You're never going to read in a book. We wouldn't even comprehend it in a book. And so I don't think these authors should be idolized in a certain way. And I don't, I'm not saying that we are, but they kind of are by the masses. Like they're very idolized. And even the greats, like your Aristotle. And I really wanted to read your uh, Marcus uh, Aurelius. Uh, Aurelius Meditations. Yes, I wanted to read that. I did listen to the abbreviated version of it. But like, I do agree that there are some... You can put words in a certain way that are more beautiful than others. Like there's certain like quotes and like, dude, that guy just talks in a cool way. Anything he types is, so I do agree that there is an art to mixing words. The Tao Te Ching, I don't think, I, that's been book of the episode a long time ago, I think, but that's one of those, it's very simple, but they're saying in like a few sentences what others are trying to say in a thousand pages. Like right. They just do or easy or, you know. From my understanding or from my experience of reading, I think the most beautifully 
written things are in parables. Mm. Things in the Bible, uh, Da Vinci would write in parables. When I, when I read, mo not even all of it, but a lot of his notebooks were in parables. And it's just like, where you read it and you're like, that's in completely open to interpretation. Like, cause that's how life is. Every, if you're not, you, you're not hitting truth until it's a paradox, until there's like, it, until there's two things at the same place at once, you know, kind of like double slit theory where like an ad or a electron can be at two places at the same time. It's like, and, and like, I don't know. I, I, I love that. When I fit, mm -hmm. when I first found that out, I'm like, that makes sense. And that's, it's like, there's never white and black. There's always, it could be white and black. It's not just even gray. It's like literally however you want it to fucking be. <laughs> so it's like, let's not invest too much faith in books in general. Mm -hmm. It's kind of the, the thing that we thought about.